I'm home safe in the garage and my fuel transfer pump isn't working. Good day everybody, welcome to today's video. In today's video, as you guys seen, we're going to deal with an electrical gremlin. This one here is actually going to be pretty simple. I did some poking around and already figured it out because now we got power. One of the first things I did is that I know this switch panel is possibly even doing some 4 by 4 and that the connections could have got loose, but that was not the case. The problem lied underneath the hood. Since I knew there was a wire loose or something, because when I was coming home, it flickered on and off. So I figured either there was a wire that was broken. Some of the things I did is I traced it where it came out of the vehicle. I traced it going all the way along. Then I traced the connection right here. The ground went to the bus bar and then the positive actually went inside the fuse box here. So I transferred a bunch of fuel over for now. But the problem definitely lies in here. So it comes through that hole and there's like a sharp bend. And I think over time with vibrations that the wires probably just snap. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to go down to Princess Auto and I'm going to get a inline fuse and we're going to get rid of this, this jumper here and we're going to put a fuse in the line and run it directly to the genesis off road and that way we should be able to eliminate any of those issues so i need to get the terminal it's going to be decent size actually i can just go to one of these one of these pins there so that's where i'm going to be for right now so I'm gonna make sure this wire I'm just going to make sure that wire is not pinched and then we'll deal with this later. This is where I need to turn it on. I'm pumping. So there's something definitely up here. Touch the wire, it'll start pumping and we stopped. See that? We need to investigate. Let's pull this up. up out of the way is it possible that the wire is broken somewhere because that's a big question right just getting everything set up here and ideally what you want to do you always want to run your fuse the closest to your power source, which in this case will be the battery. You don't want it all the way down the line because that way, if a short happens before that, the fuse or the wire could burn and start a fire. It's always closest to the source. So now I'm going to put this jumper wire on because I don't know how much I need. I'm going to put my heat shrink on, take my terminal, and I'm going to crimp it like such. Take my heat shrink all the way up to there. So I have it out and put the 20 amp fuse back in. Then I'm gonna terminate this line up further and then connect to it. There's one fuse. And hopefully this one here will come out easier. Perfect. Put the one back in. So this could actually be where the problem is from. Let's 
cut the other side of that off. This might actually still be good. So this was the culprit that was suspected causing issues, but it could have actually been this butt connector slice too. Either way, we just cut it all out. And we're gonna solder a new wire in. So now I'm just going to run one of those terminals. Some all connected. You can tell it's good because the red light's on. That's to tell you the fuse is blowing. So if I put this in, the fuse will, or the light will go out. It's a good way to tell now in the future. Let's close that back up. And then. Get that all closed up. Make sure the wire shits out of the way. There we are, powered up. Shouldn't have no more issues now. There you have it. That project was relatively pretty easy. I'm pretty sure the problem was the butt connector. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, post them below. I'll see you guys in the next one.